Hey guys, in this chapter, let us try to understand what an operating system is, the different types of operating systems, the history of Linux, its architecture, its distributions, and the advantages of Linux over others. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let's say you own a car, but you don't know how to drive. Now if you want to go somewhere, you have to hire a driver, sit in the back, and tell the driver the destination. Now the driver will handle the rest of things like starting the car, shifting the gears, accelerating, braking and reaching the destination as quickly as possible. Similarly, if you compare your car as your computer hardware including CPU, RAM and storage and the application running on your computer as yourself, you need a driver who knows how to manage these hardware resources for that application. And that driver is called the operating system. We simply instruct computer through the user interface of an application and the driver that is operating system takes care of everything. It starts the process, determines the resources required, uses the RAM efficiently, completes the process as quickly as possible and so on. We don't need to worry about how it does, we just sit back, instruct and relax. If you have just hardware without an operating system, it's useless. It's like having a Range Rover car, but no one knows how to drive it. Then it's just a showpiece. In short, an operating system is a software program that efficiently manages the computer resources like the CPU, RAM and storage. It handles essential tasks like process management, memory management and file management. There are different operating systems available in the market. Linux, macOS, Windows, Android and iOS are the popular operating system options. Today, around 80% of the servers run on Linux while 20% run on Windows. In mobile devices, around 75% use Android which internally uses the Linux kernel while 25% use iOS. Since Linux is very popular, now let us learn about the history of Linux. In the 1960s, researchers at Bell Labs developed an operating system called Unix. Unix became very popular for its portability, multi-user capabilities and multitasking support. Its simplicity and robustness quickly made it a favorite, especially in academic and research environments. However, there was a problem. Unix was proprietary, meaning users couldn't freely modify or redistribute it. Then, in 1983, Richard Stallman launched the GNU project with the goal of creating a completely free Unix-like operating system. Stallman introduced the concept of free software, promoting users' freedom to run, study, modify and share it. The GNU project created many essential tools like compilers, editors, libraries and shells but lacked a crucial component that is kernel, which is the core part of an operating system that manages the hardware. Then, in 1991, Linus Torvalds, a 21-year-old computer science student, was dissatisfied with the limited access to proprietary Unix systems. Then, he decided to create his own Unix-like kernel for personal use. On August 25, 1991, Linus famously announced his project on an internet news group. Finally, he released the Linux kernel, but it was basic. Then, Linus made the code open source, inviting contributions. Then in 1992, the combination of Linux kernel by Linus Towels and GNU tools by Richard Stallman created a fully functional, free, Unix-like operating system. That is the reason it is often referred to as GNU Linux. GNU project tools combined with Linux kernel provided all the components needed to run on a computer. Linux open source nature attracted many contributors from the different parts of the world, quickly giving it robust features and an active developer community. Later, with the Linux popularity growing, different groups began packaging Linux with the GNU tools into distributions to simplify installation and use. We will discuss more about these distributions in few minutes. Then, Linux faced competition from Windows and Mac OS on desktops because it was tough to be used by non-technical users. But distributions like Ubuntu made it more accessible for non-technical users as well. Linux also gained traction in embedded systems, powering devices like routers, smart appliances and other hardware. In 2008, Google launched Android, an open-source mobile operating system based on the Linux kernel. 
Android quickly became a massive success, making Linux the foundation for billions of mobile devices worldwide, from smartphones to tablets and smart TVs. In 2013, Docker popularized containers, a form of lightweight virtualization built on Linux, essential for cloud-native applications and the evolution of Linux in modern IT. Today, Linux is everywhere, powering most web servers, supercomputers, mobile devices, and cloud infrastructure. Now that we understand the history of Linux, let us now look at its architecture to better understand how Linux works. We understood that to manage hardware, we need operating system. And the heart of any operating system is its kernel. The kernel contains various modules interacting directly with the computer's hardware to manage system resources and provide services to applications and processes running on the system. Its key responsibilities include process management, memory management, and hardware abstraction. This essential component only what Linus Torvalds initially developed in 1991. Another important component of Linux OS is the shell. A shell is nothing but a program that provides an interface for users to interact with the operating system. The shell accepts human readable commands from users and converts them into instructions that the kernel can understand. There are different types of commonly used shells, like SH which was developed by Stephen Bond at Bell Labs in the 1970s. It is one of the earliest Unix shells and known for its simplicity. But it was missing logical and arithmetic expressions and no support for the command history and the autocomplete option. Then the Bill Joy at the University of California created C shell in the 1970s. It is known for its Unix syntax and command line editing. It supports command history and recall, but it was lacking full support for standard input-output file handling. Then in 1990, Paul developed Z shell which offers rich features and customization. In this shell, they improved array and variable management. Also, it supports plugins to extend the functionality. Then came the bash which is an enhanced version of original bond shell. That's why it is called bond again shell. It supports basic debugging and signal handling. Also, it supports command history feature for recalling and reusing previous commands. If you want to know which type of shell you are using currently, just hit echo dollar zero. As you can see, I am using Z shell. Don't worry, we will learn a bunch of commands like this in the upcoming chapters. Another important component of the Linux OS is utilities. The kernel combined with other tools like shell and utilities makes the complete operating system. Utilities like VI, Nano, LS, MV, CAT and others are very helpful. Awesome! Now that we understand the architecture of Linux, let's take a look at Linux distributions. In short, distros. Every operating system has kernel, not just Linux operating system. But the Linux kernel is special because it is open source, meaning anyone with the right skill can modify and distribute their own version for free. Because of this nature only, Linux is present everywhere today. It is freely available for both commercial and non-commercial purposes. Since Linux kernel is available for free, programmers like you and me can modify the Linux kernel by writing code and create their own distribution. So, a Linux distribution is nothing but a version of Linux kernel packaged with specific tools, libraries and software to support different use cases. Today, there are more than 600 Linux distributions available on the internet. However, many of them are not widely used. Some of the famous Linux distributions include Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. However, Ubuntu is the most popular distribution in the Linux industry. It is a lightweight Linux distribution that works smoothly and quickly. Please note that each distribution is meant for a different use case. So it's important to choose the right one depending on what you need. For example, if you are just getting started, Ubuntu is a great option. For servers, Debian or CentOS is ideal. Let me know which is your favorite distribution of Linux in the comments. I would love to hear that. I highly recommend you to learn Linux by following this series as it gives you more control over your work environment. You can also automate tasks, write scripts, manage servers and build reliable systems. And finally, there are a lot of advantages of using Linux over other operating systems. 
As we already discussed, Linux is accessible to the public for free. However, that is not the case with Windows or Mac OS. You don't have to pay any money to get your genuine copy of Linux distribution such as Ubuntu. You can modify it, customize it and even contribute to its development if you are a techie. Also we can find hundreds of Linux distributions scattered for a different set of needs. So we can choose to install any of the available Linux distribution according to our requirement. There is Linux for everyone. Linux is also known for its security. The way Linux handles permissions and user access is far superior to other operating systems making it much harder for viruses and malware to take over our system. If you are using Linux, you will not have to worry about reinstalling it just to experience a faster and smoother system. Linux helps your system run smooth for a longer period. Another advantage is it is customizable. If you like tweaking your systems look, Linux is just perfect for you. You will love how customizable Linux is, whether it's appearance, system settings or automating tasks with scripts. Cool! Now that you have a basic understanding of Linux, in the upcoming chapters, let us master Linux. Stay tuned. My name is Pavanil Tepu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.